How can we get the most out of a photo if we're using it as a reference for our drawing? We can't always sit in location for the things that we want to draw, particularly if you live in Australia. It's a long way from the European buildings and streetscapes that I love to draw. So if I'm using a photo, how do I make the most of everything a photo has to offer in my drawing? And how do I avoid the pitfalls that photos can often have? Let's look at a photo and I'll talk you through the considerations I make when I use a photo reference. And then we'll put it all into practice and we'll do the drawing. Let's go. First, we need to choose our reference photo. And a reminder that the photographer actually holds the copyright for their photos. And that includes for drawing them. But this is a photo that I took, so that's not a problem. So I don't need to get anyone's permission. Now this is in London, just around the corner from Trafalgar Square. Here's the side of the National Gallery. And here in the background is St Martin's in the field. And while we might choose a photo fairly instinctively because we like it, it's always important to say, what exactly do I like about this photo? Because that will help me have a focus with my drawing. Because when I draw, I'm not just copying something which is in front of me. If I wanted an exact copy, I'd get a copy of the photo. When I draw, I'll be making choices to emphasize, to simplify, to adjust. So what's the overall effect? I like here that I want to capture. And when I look at this scene, what I really like is this church in the background with its very elegant spire and relatively simple form in white, in sunlight, in strong contrast to the shade and the shadow, which is down the right hand side and across the front. I also like the bustle of tourists here. I really like the contrast between architecture and foliage. And we have that here with these trees here, but most significantly with these trees here in this wonderful deep shade with their natural form contrasting to the straight lines of the architecture in sunlight. And the value of stopping for a moment and focusing on what exactly do I like about this scene? What exactly do I want to try and capture something of in my drawing? Is seen in this next point where we actually ask ourselves, do I want to crop this? In some ways, I like it all. I like the contrast between this architecture here in the dark cool, this architecture over here in the warm, bright, the contrast between the architecture and the trees and with the people adding another lively element down the bottom. But I think I want to concentrate and focus more narrowly on the elements of this that appeal to me. So I'm thinking cropping out a lot of the dark, but then also balancing by cropping out some of the light. And sheets of paper are a great way if we're looking at cropping a print. What I can't decide is whether to leave any of the National Gallery in. If I leave it in, then it brings this section towards me more, which does increase the sense of St Martin's in the field sitting a bit further back. But I do have these tourists down the front here coming forward. So I'm preferring it this way, where we still get this lovely sense of going right down into the distance and the contrast between the trees in dark and the building further back. So I'm going to crop something like this. And here's one I prepared earlier. The next thing I do is I look at what I'm drawing and before I put my pen on the paper, I observe it all very carefully and making sure I can understand as well as possible what's happening. Now in my original photo with these trees here, it was very hard to distinguish anything here even though there's a row of trees. But I didn't want a big blob of leaf here I'm wanting to achieve a sense of depth of trees closer and trees further back. So I printed out a lighter copy, which I used to look more closely at the trees. And I printed my crop drawing from the lighter picture. There are some short branches that have sprouted out of the side that have large leaves here, which are actually the closest leaves to me. I want to draw them differently to these leaves further up here, which are part of the same tree, but further away. And then there's this tree, these leaves here, which come from this tree behind, further trees, further away. So I want to capture the sense of the closest leaves are larger and we see them more clearly than the ones further away. We'll come back to this lighter version for the next point with photos. And that's that it's important to appreciate how photos distort the image they capture. In order to collect as much of the scene as possible, there is an exaggeration of, if you like, vertical perspective. And so, the spot directly in front of the camera lens, which in this case was about here, is vertical if there are any vertical lines there. But the vertical lines to the left and the right 
slope away from that center line more and more the further away they get. So in fact these lines act the way perspective angles act with eye level, the way vertical perspective acts as they move further away left and right from the straight ahead point the angle increases in a fanning pattern. So these lines are not parallel they will eventually all meet at the same point on this vertical point. So the question is what do we do about it? Sometimes I draw them because they can add a real sense of drama particularly when we're looking up. But for this sort of scene it's not what I want. So I like to remove them when I draw because cameras flatten depth out because they capture so much detail so clearly even in the distance. And in life part of the way we discern that things are further away is that we see them less clearly. We see the colors less intensely and we see the outlines, the shapes less clearly when compared to things that are much closer. And so having sharper edges, greater clarity is also a way of our brain perceiving something as closer. So one way to create a sense of depth in our drawing is to draw the closest things with a greater clarity and sharpness and detail and if we're using color with brighter colors than things further away. And I like to divide my scenes into foreground, midground and far ground or distance. And I work on them quite separately in my head. So in this scene I'm going to make the foreground these figures here, these obvious close ones, but going back to these ones that are on this side of the street or almost on this side of the street, going right across. All of these trees I'm thinking of as foreground, although as they get further back I will want to draw them with a lighter touch. St Martin's in the field itself is going to be mid-ground and anything behind St Martin's, this building here and these trees here, will be far ground, will be distance. And the final consideration for me before I actually start to draw is do I want to make any adjustments? Do I want to leave anything out, put anything in, shift something slightly? Because again these are the prerogatives of an artist. And I think really the, the one thing I do want to do is create a little more gap between the spire and this pole here. I want to leave the pole in because I like the way it creates a strong foreground contrast. That we have to peer around it to see the church which helps create the feeling that the church sits back. I don't want to move the pole particularly to the right because I don't want it to be in the center. So that means I'm probably going to shift the spire ever so slightly to the left and the pole even perhaps less slightly to the right. Sometimes if I've had a vehicle such as a bus that I haven't wanted drawn or a truck in the way, I'll go and Google a photo that doesn't have the truck there so I can see what I need to draw in. But I want to draw this double-decker bus because that's part of London being London. So with all this focus in my head now, I'm ready to draw. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If you haven't hit subscribe to my channel yet, then why not do it now while I get organized to draw from this reference.